Hey there, welcome to Authentically Raw. I'm your host, Jamie Darris. A couple months ago, I went to a presentation called Developing Healthy Kid, the school system that we are in does these periodically throughout the year and they are fabulous and I was particularly interested in this one because it was all about social media and I have a love-hate relationship with social media most of the time I'm gonna be honest I hate it more than than I love it it's just me we'll go on with that which I'm going to have a follow-up episode to this by the way Because this one, we talk a little bit more about kids and specifically Gen Z, which Gen Z is those born between 1997 and 2012. So that's roughly currently kids that are, you know, ages 11 to 26 right now. But just the effects that it's having on this generation. Um, My jaw was on the floor. I felt like I wanted to cry all the way through it because I have three children in this age bracket. And then I have one younger one. And to be honest, I can't remember what generation she is alpha or something crazy like that I don't know but this is a fabulous conversation I had with my friend Missy Brophy who is a licensed therapist I called her up the following morning after going to this presentation because I just needed to vent and all of a sudden I said you know what can you come over can we hit record so this is the conversation you will hear between us And I will follow it up uh, in the next episode. I'm going to discuss some of the things that we talked about it and just relate it to adults because, wow, is it a problem for us too. Anyway, enjoy this conversation. The leading cause of death for Gen Z is um, accidental deaths, mostly by car accidents, but the number two is death by suicide. And they talked about how social media has exasperated these issues, like, you know, mental health issues. There's a lot of body image issues, self-image issues, um, obviously just confidence, self-worth, perfectionism. Uh, and this isn't just, oh, a bunch of stats from kids that were, let's, let's do a study and see what they say. These were little clips of actually, you know, kids talking, and they showed a lot of clips of... TikTok and just other social media things. It was, um, I guess here's where I'm going to start out because I have always said to my husband, first I always said, it's like giving your kids a phone is like handing them heroin and managing their addiction. But from the things I've learned, I've actually changed my drug of choice. It's not heroin anymore. It's because I've, I've learned so much about how, um, you know, when you're on your phone, it doesn't matter how old you are, but the dopamine that's released and, you know, we're going there for our hits of dopamine and it's actually more comparable to cocaine. And so I've changed that. Handing your kids a phone is like handing your kids cocaine and then managing that addiction until they leave their house. And then I guess basically sending them off saying, good luck handle it on your own what do you have to say about that (laughs) well I think I think like you're saying the you give your you give your kid a phone and it's like suddenly they have the world in their pocket so they and and they can have it with them depending on the rules 24 7 so you think of I think of kids that are like in kids that are in their room on the phone scrolling through it brings all of the outside world whether it's and all the outside people and whether they're speaking the truth or not it becomes their it becomes part of their world mm-hmm. I mean and that's super like that's super scary you see some of the stuff on social media some of it can be helpful but some of it if your kids are absorbing all that stuff that's not the helpful stuff um, and you don't know about it or nobody knows about it and it becomes their reality and what they're basing everything on on of course it's of course it's a mess I always like you were saying you think of it as being more like cocaine I've always thought of it it's like you know your phone is a computer but it's a computer with access to everything like when we were young there wasn't you know we didn't we didn't ha- we didn't have that and I mean with the push of a button or the swipe of a screen I mean kids have Kids have access to everything. They have access to pornography. They have access to any information that, I mean, it's, it's, it's endless. It's mm-hmm. endless. A couple of the conversations I've had with the kids, and I almost feel like it's in one ear, out one ear sometimes at this point, 
but a couple of the things, you know, we joke about it. I'll say, it, it really sucks for you. We got away with anything. We could pass a note, say a bad thing, or, you know, something happened on the weekend at a party, um, and no one was recording it. There was no documentation. We could get away with right. pretty much anything, and you just can't. And it's it's not like a scare tac- tactic to, you better be, you know, on your best behavior sort of thing. But there's no escaping. Like, the harm just keeps harming. You, like, we had a chance to undo or unravel things. And say if someone said something to you or is written a no and it stung, it hurt, you found out about it, it was, you know, the note was, say, mm-hmm. thrown up ripped up and thrown in the trash or um you know now kids it's on their phone and they can sit there and revisit it and they do and they even talked about that last night how they will sit there and go back um you know I picture the kids laying in bed with the computer next to them open you know their laptop is there their phone is in front of their face they're in the dark and just it's this rhythmical swipe like swipe like and it, it it's so it's like the mouse <laughs> tapping yeah. their their yeah, drug their little, yeah exactly right and how do you pull it away um i mean those are a couple of the the conversations we've had but even in it and this was brought up last night too as you're basically writing your resume right now you are creating an online portfolio portfolio that will follow mm-hmm. you through life. So when you go to get that job, you know, whether, you know, you're out of high school and you go even to go for a trade, you know, they might check you out or, you know, you're 25 or 30 or 40 or whatever, that's all being documented. Yeah. That was not the case for us. We no. could shine, show up with our shiny resume, smile and put on our show. That was it. And that was one of the conversations I used to have with my, with my kids when they were younger was every little thing that they're commenting on or putting out there, you, you don't know where it's going to go. There's going to be a record of it out there. And even if you're saying something tongue-in-cheek or you know, not thinking things through, people don't know that when they read mm-hmm. it down the line. And like, it's out there. Mm-hmm. And we always teach our kids, too, about, you know, okay, learn from your mistakes. Well, some of those mistakes are... You know, I I did something stupid at school or on the weekend, and now I have to face some consequences. Mm-hmm. They're not lifelong. They're immediate. Okay, I did something, and, you know, coach made me sit out for a game or two, and this is different. It's going to follow you for the rest of your life. You don't know when this is going to come back, and you're going to face the consequence when, you know, 15 years down the road. I mean, those are really real mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. And then... So that that's one aspect of it. And another aspect of it, though, that I think really hit home to me is the mental and emotional health because um, I'm, I'm not a neuroscientist, but they had plenty of them on there last night, and they talked about the neural pathways being developed, and especially, you know, like in elementary, middle, but even through high school and stuff, how these pathways that need to be developed for critical thinking – using your imagination, um, even reading emotions of other people and responding to these emotions, these kids are not using those pathways. So they're just simply not being developed. Yeah. And, and you think about it, how many times in your own home, because your kids are how old now, Missy? 20, I'm in spot, 20 and 24. 20 and 24. So think of, you know, they get their phones in middle school and high school, and you think of how many times you had groups of kids at your house and it's it's I don't know they're sitting there all on their phones and I can remember kind of joking around you know put the phones down interact Mm -hmm. you know do things one thing that they pointed out that I found so true is how as an adult I can send you an email or a text and you when we know each other, you usually know my tone of voice or my sarcasm when I'm serious, when I'm funny, you know, when I'm upset or maybe sad or mad or whatever. But then there's times that we as adults, we get emails and texts, even from people that are close to us where you're like, I don't know how to take that. And you know, that's a downfall of email and text. And sometimes phone calls are just the way to go. 
They made a point last night that just my, my jaw was on the floor because the point was we know how to read emotions. Like I'm sitting here, we are face to face doing this conversation and I can, I can read your face. I can read your mannerisms. And I know if I'm going to say something where you're like, whoa, what'd you say? You know, <laughs> and I know how to read that. Kids that have not developed those skills they're they're finding they don't know how to read other people's emotions mm-hmm. so it's it's not just the oh i don't know how to read this text or what do they really mean when they're in person with people their heads are down staring at a phone they don't understand the facial expressions the mannerisms the tone of voices what they mean like we do because they're not paying attention mm-hmm. to them. So, they're, they're only listening with one ear. They're, on, they're, they're not watching at all. They don't even know how to pick up on these normal social skills. So they can't even pick up on them, but they're also not developing them very well in themselves. Mm-hmm. And they are seeing huge, huge problems with kids don't know how to express their emotions, express or manage their emotions like we used to. <laughs> And also just the behavioral problems in school, at home, everywhere. Talk to me just, about that. No, just <laughs> like I think of just typical interactions, like before, before, like before cell phones, before the blow up of social media. You, I used to co- like I can remember I used to coach soccer back in the day, and after games or after practices, there's times that as teams we'd go out, mm-hmm. and early on. You know, the kids would, you know, the kids would say, whether it was years ago or before um, when kids were young enough that they didn't have cell phones, they'd sit around and they'd have so much fun together and it would be, it would be a social, you know, it would be, it would be social for them. Whereas as the kids got older and social media became more prominent and more kids had cell phones, they would sit around the table together and there, there wouldn't be conversation. It would be you know, playing on their phones every once in a while, showing something on their screen to the person next to them screen. But it wasn't that, it wasn't the social interaction that kids need to, de- to be able to develop their social skills and know, you know, just how to function socially in life. I mean, even, even my daughter was just saying to me the other day, you know, I use my phone and computer so much, my handwriting's horrible. And, you know, just the basic things like that that you don't get by constantly, you know, with the, with the, with the way the world is today with all of the, you know, electronics. Right. I know. You just reminded me back in the day. Can you remember sitting there in middle school and high school perfecting the bubble letters in your cursive? <laughs> right. Yeah. Kids, kids can't kids read can't it. Read. Well, I was going to say now. Um, oh, yeah. You, both of my kids, when they get letters in the mail from, um, from grandparents that are written in cursive, they, and my kids are both smart kids, but they will hand me the note and say, I can't, I can't read this. Yeah. And that's foreign, you know, that's foreign to me, but that's more and more, more and more common. So question, do you find your kids shy away from phone conversations or FaceTime or, or anything like that? Because I asked that question because I see a difference, you know, between my bigger kids, the 18 and the 20 year old, and then the nine and the 12 year old, because I think there's a shift. What, what, what do you find with your kids? You know, with my, I don't notice it all, I guess with my kids being away from home too, it's, it's harder to notice, but I think that anything, so many kids that I do know don't, they don't, they don't want to do the phone call or they don't even want to do the email. It's a text. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's, and there's, there's so many, I mean, there's a lot of great things about kids of this generation, but I just feel they're getting ripped, they're getting ripped off with what they don't even know that they're missing. The part that is weird, I don't even, to try to wrap my brain around this one, is that I, I think it's kind of comical how I'll go in my, you know, like say my daughter and she's at college now, but I would go in her room and she'd be FaceTiming with a group of her girlfriends, right? And that's so normal to them. And I can remember thinking, oh, in a million years, do I want to talk to my friends on the phone through mm-hmm. FaceTime? It's so awkward and weird. But yet I would say, oh, you know, if they would want to make a plan, you go ahead and call that person or you talk. And they, <gasps> they'd gasp like, why would I want you? Yeah. Right. How can I make, how can I call on the yeah. phone and just talk? But yet 
you'll you'll put a camera in front of you and do all these mm-hmm. TikTok videos and this and that and I and we're the opposite. I guess right. maybe that's something right. that you're used to. But with the whole TikTok and things, a couple of the other things they were talking about was and and I think we we mostly think girls, but it's seen a ton in boys too is they and they interviewed some kids, but they they feel this need to be perfect, have this perfect lifestyle, mm. um, take pictures of the perfect food, um, you know, have the perfect setting and back, put the filters on. And there is a ton of issues of feeling shame with basically everything, you know, where you live, <laughs> um, how you yep. dress, what you eat, what your family does, the vacations you take, but there's all these body image issues. And it's not, it's not just a girl thing. I mean, they, they did say how the rise in mental and emotional health, um, or it was, you know, actually the, the rise in issues with mental and emotional health between the ages of 16 and 24 is, is just skyrocketed, but also with the boys. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that that's talked about that much because it's thought of as, as a girl thing. And this is Roxy in the background. We're dying over here laughing, by the way, because <laughs> Roxy back. got a duck toy. <laughs> We're going to go with well, it. Well, and I, and I do. I think you're right because the, bo- the boys tend to get downplayed because people think people think that the, girl, the girls tend to be the more sensitive ones, which is, it's not true. And you figure when kids are seeing all the stuff that they're seeing on social media, mm-hmm. um, you know, everything that's, like you said, it's backgrounds are prepped, uh, you know, Bodies are put in light that highlights them the way that you want to be highlighted. Kid, kids that are looking at this are seeing it and thinking that this is, you know, not all kids, but a lot of kids are looking at this, especially the younger ones, thinking that this is reality. This is just a quick photo snap and this person just naturally looks like this or whatever it is that they're showing um, is coming to you in just a quick snapshot natural view when in reality, you know, it's it might be... 20 minutes or an hour or 50 shots that are taken to get one shot that look that, that ends up getting posted and someone thinks it's just a casual shot when it's not and then everybody you know then everybody's living up to wanting to wanting to create something that's just as you know just as perfect and i mean there there are there's a couple of the of the newer apps, like the B, I don't know if you know about the, like the Be Real, yes. like that's, and I guess it's not even that new anymore, that there is the, the pockets of kids that are trying to be more, more genuine, not as filtered, not as, you know, that, that kind of thing, but it, you know, it's, it's one little thing in a pool of sharks, so... The thing that's crazy, too, is that they talked about how they were perfecting their body. Like, there's, mm-hmm. there's, there's little TikTok videos, even, how to stand to get mm-hmm. you the most curves. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it numbers it down, step one, step two, step three, whatever. So they will pose and they will do things like this, you know, maybe spend an hour on it yep. and then they post it. And it's then you're constantly stuck checking how many people liked it. Yep. In the same sentence, they're all saying, but we all know that everybody just scroll, like, scroll, like, scroll, like. They're not even looking at it. So it's such a mind game. I mean, me, my adult mind thinks, you you know, you look at these kids and I'll even talk to them how you realize people are just liking it without even looking at it. And then you're spending all this time and they know that, mm-hmm. perfecting it. They know that, but it's it's still it's still the way it operates, and it's it's baffling to me. And I've constantly am telling the kids, put your phone down, stop staring and watching other people live their lives. Go live your own, like, yeah. and and I not in a mean way, but I've kind of nicely said, yeah. get a life because you're living your life through someone else's fake life. Like it's it's not real. The hard thing is, is they get it. But they're still sucked into it, and they they know it, mm-hmm. and they're sur- and they're surrounded by it, and they're surrounded by it. So it's even if you're a kid who wants to get away from it, it's really difficult to do when it is everywhere. Everywhere. Okay. So then, as a parent, and this is like my big thing when I called you this morning, I'm like, I'm fired up about this because uh-huh. I feel 
as a parent now with two kids in college, I, I did, I did what the best I could. And I think I did pretty good with them. But like you said, I mean, it's, it's everywhere. It's, it's whatever mm-hmm. it's their responsibility now, but I don't think the challenge was quite as hard because there wasn't as many apps. There wasn't as, you know, and I had, I did have good rules. Mm-hmm. I did make sure the phones were down in the kitchen at night. I think it was right about the time they turned 16 when I gave up on it. So it was more like 10th or 11th grade. From then on, mm-hmm. I I, I kind of laid off that. Yep. Um, and granted, part of it was, I say this often, I was playing the four kids card. I was giving myself some. Because yep. by then I had yep. had two younger kids and you know I can't you can't micromanage everything and you you need to teach them responsibility you have to give them a a little bit of trust to work with because and then as long as they're not doing anything to show you that they cannot handle it like you you want to encourage them to be able to get make good choices on themselves it's the it's the point in time when you have kids that you know have the freedom and are accessing stuff that is like my rule is always around you know safety, health and well-being. Mm-hmm. So if kids are accessing sites or people that you know that can contribute to their you know to to issues around safety and well-being, that's mm-hmm. when it's time for a parent to really step in and you're you know, I mean, people hate to hear it, but if it means taking your phone away from your kid and they're going to have a fit and they're going to do all that, like, as the parent, it's your responsibility mm-hmm. to make sure that they are, that your kids are safe. I know. And speaking of that, I, I mean, I was feeling that this morning because I have a 12-year-old and he has access to a cell phone um, when we got rid of our landline Several years ago, we decided to replace it with a cell phone. We were able to keep like the same landline number with it. It was so we basically said instead of it being connected to the wall, it's just it's here and and it's worked out great because when they do step into middle school and they're exposed to hundreds more kids and more friends, they're going to be having sleepovers and things like that, you know, and I don't know these parents. So yes, take this phone with you. I want to have that direct one-on-one communication with you. And I love that. And we've even come up with things over the years. You know, if you're in a spot, I will always be the mom and you can call me any name you want. And you can be like, oh, my mom just texted me. You know, I can't stand it when she does that. I'm like, throw me under the bus, call me a name. I don't care. But oh, she's making me leave right now because, you know, for whatever reason. I love that part of it. Um, but there's this, everybody has a phone. I'm the only one that doesn't have one. Um, they all stay up till 11 o'clock. They're all in these Facebook groups and they're all Snapchatting till 11 on school nights and blah, 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 blah. Everyone else, everyone else. And I've always been really good with, you know, I understand that, (laughs) Um, but these are our rules and I'm not doing it to punish you. I'm doing it because I care for you. And I've even started to say, because I don't want to pin you down on the floor and shoot, you know, cocaine in you or snort, you know, make you snort it and liquor and cigarettes and drugs and everything else. Um, and that's what this is when you overdo it and become addicted. It's, it's, there's a lot of good things for me. And I feel like for so many parents, we back down and, we lose our power as parents, and I don't want to say because you need to have control over your kids, but you do need to keep the power over being a responsible parent, and they will wear you down yeah. and beat course, you down. Because that's what works. Because that's oh. what works. So of course, I mean that's that's I, that's the thing that's so hard as a parent is you, you know, you want your kids to like you. There are a lot, you you just need to get okay with the fact that there are going to be times your kids are not going to like you. They are mm-hmm. going to think you're the worst person out there. They are, you know, they're going to bad mouth you to, you know, to friends, to you, to whatever. But, you know, when you're, when your kids, they're, like you were talking about earlier, their brains are not fully developed. They are functioning at the developmental level of whatever age they are mm-hmm. at. They don't have the ability to make the same kinds of decisions and understand things at the level that we do as parents. So, you know, I mean, it just, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a battle, but you need to be okay with your kids being 
upset with you mm -hmm. because if if everything that they wanted and they argued for you gave into you know I mean that's what are you yeah when there's I mean it's it's boundaries it's mm -hmm. it's boundaries and and I think one thing and I, and I did do this this morning because the battle was um you know and I was a little distraught from last night <laughs> from all the statistics and watching these videos and it was just it's disturbing to me um, because I'm not a huge phone screen time person. Um, I, I barely even watch TV shows. I'd rather be reading a book. I'd rather be outside, you know. Yeah. So part of me is no screens, you know, and I will do that sometimes. It's a no screen Saturday. This is not a punishment. Mm -hmm. It's a gift. Um, but even this morning it was, you know, on the bus, it's, it's, it's really boring and I just want to bring the phone to school that way on the way home on the bus, I can listen to music. And I had that, you know, because it's an hour long bus ride. So first it was, okay, I understand you and I hear you. It is very boring on the bus. Number two, you're on there 30 minutes, not an hour and 30 minutes is long to be bored, but guess what? You're not going to die. <laughs> yes. And I, and I had to go in and I had to throw in, I learned last night that your brain develops when you're bored and you're looking around the window mm -hmm. and your imagination is going. And I had to go into that little yep. spiel long enough until I started to lose them again. So I reeled them back in of, you know, I love you. And my answer is still no. Yep. And I think the part of that a lot of people or a lot of parents deal with too, it's that you, you get beat down mm -hmm. and so you cave. But also the, my number two thing is that avoidance of conflict. I don't want to sit here and argue and have oh, these conflicts sure. with my kids if you about know your the kids same gonna blow. If you know they're going to yeah. blow up when you say no. Yes. And suddenly, though, you have this parent-child relationship over this phone that you handed them and you pay for. Suddenly, you're walking on eggshells around them. And that is where you can hear it in my voice right now. Yep. I get pissed. Well, and <laughs> like, that's, that's also where when you're a parent and you're so worn down and you give in that one time, well, then they're like, oh, that actually worked. Yeah. So then, you know, three weeks later, they realize, oh, maybe if I keep causing a stink, they're going to break down. And then when you try to put your foot down, if they've already known that your foot doesn't always stay down, then of course they're going to push. That's what, that's what kids do. Kids okay. want instant gratification. They want what they want at that moment in time. They don't have the level of patience developed like we do as adults. Well, some adults, some adults, but, um, they're wearing you know, my patience. I mean, kids are, kids, I mean, when, and you know, I mean, when, when, especially teenagers, when there is something that they want that they can't have, they are all in to find ways to get it. Yes. You know, and as a parent, it can be exhausting. And there are days that you just want to be like, oh my gosh, like, fine, have it, have it. Um, and, and some days comes, that's okay. Oh, of course. But you have to have the realization that in the long run, yeah. it might it might screw you. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing is being open and honest, like you said, like set some clear boundaries. And I thought of that this morning. Um, and we we did chat a little bit. I think it was you. I hung up and I called another friend. So one of <laughs> one of you, I said, <laughs> when I because this is when, and I feel like just talking through it though, it's how you come up. You, you feel like okay, I'm not alone. Like mm -hmm. all the parents are struggling with this. Um, I'd like a little help here. Yeah. If I'm going to tell my kid that there is no more phone past eight thirty nine o'clock, and all of you, because mm -hmm. here's the thing, it's not like well, you know, I need I need a parent packed in order to stick to my guns, but. I, I feel like there's there's got to be that one parent in that friend group that says, you know what, my kid's done it this time, and all the other parents, most of them are like, thank God, I want that too. Mm -hmm. And it would be so much easier if we could all work together on it. Like, you know, I even thought about that, like, hey, just an FYI, Cole's fighting me a lot lately on wanting to stay up late and be in these FaceTime chats, and I'm telling him he's got to be done by 8, 30, 9 o'clock, just an FYI. I mean, I'm not, you know, asking anything. But then my other thought was, okay, I have to decide on a, a time. Um, you get two hours screen time a day, and you can use it however you want, whether that is on a phone, whether that's on an iPad, whether that is watching a movie on the TV, or whether that is, is gaming. Um, I think two hours a day is plenty, considering you know, how long they're at school, if there's activities after school, whether there's 
homework in these teenagers, there were some teenagers last night that referenced their screen time was anywhere from two and a half hours up to seven hours. My thought, my first thought was, make those kids get a job after school where they can't use their phone. But anyway, well, and so yeah. I think, and that's where like, as the parent, you need to figure out what parameters work for you because the second that, you know, the, you need to figure out what works for you, what works for your kid, what works for your family, and set it and discuss it and know that that's, that's the way, I mean, realistically, that's the way you want it to be no matter what everybody else around you is doing because as, as, as hard as it is, you know, you know, we've all heard from the kids, you're the only one that does this, you're the, I mean, like, whatever it might be, whether it's around social media, whether it's around phones, whether it's around gaming, whatever it's around, mm -hmm. whether it's around going to friends' houses, anything. Um, but, I mean, as parents, we need to, you and I are very much on the same page, I think, with how we parent and mm -hmm. what we want for our kids. But that's us. And there are always going to be people who have completely different rules because that's what works for them and that what what's works for their family and it becomes we just need to be okay with you know what my kid might be um, friends with or sitting next to somebody in class who has zero screen time rules like that's the reality and mm -hmm. I need to get comfortable with hearing well so and so can do whatever they want whenever they want and you know I need to be okay with knowing you know, that's the way it is. Everybody mm -hmm. does not parent the same way. Kids do not all have the same rules. Um, but stress to my kids, mm -hmm. you know, these are the boundaries, these are the limits, this is what we've decided, make sure it's clear with them, and then, you know, stick with what you're saying. Yes, and you know, and I think it just helps too to back it up with why. Because yeah, it can't sure. just be for like, sure. you're done with your phone, turn it off, for put sure. it away. Because, because I have I done that. So. Because yeah. I said so doesn't cut it. It doesn't. Yeah. And you know, and one thing, and, and I did do this, and I'll share this, um, is that I, I tie things, I like to tie things up with a story. But I said, um, you know, to my son, I gave the example of, you know, in the real world, when you're out there working and you have a job, you get a lunch hour. You know, let's say you get one hour. Your boss says you get an hour. Your boss isn't going to dictate where you go, what you eat, who you're there with, you know, anything like that. You just, you get an hour. And so I compared it to that. Here's the phone. You get it for two hours or your screen time. Choose it how you want. But luckily for you, if you want to do 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there, whatever, and it gives them control yep. over some things too. It makes them feel... And it does. It gives them some responsibility, which they need. But yet, I am still the owner of the phone. I'm mm -hmm. still your parent. But here's how we're going to work together. And I think when we approach it that way, um, you know, it really helps. And yeah, it, you, you're okay. setting those boundaries, but you're letting them also kind of set their, their own boundaries exactly. and make decisions. And even those are the kind of situations, even if it becomes the... You know, and then there's ways if you want to earn extra time, if everything's done, if there are things, you know, if we have extra days off school or extra time or whatever, you know, you want to allow for them to be able to earn extra time for, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's, you know, again, everybody's got, everybody's got what works for them, but it's. Like, and look, then, you know, and one thing too I thought of is, um, and I have to get better at this and is catching your kids doing good and mm -hmm. acknowledging mm -hmm. it. It just, you know, like for instance, if he's playing Xbox and it's almost bedtime, um, you know, so I'll yell upstairs or go upstairs. Hey, you know, it's time to start, you know, go take your shower, go get ready for bed. Oh, I just started this game. Can I just finish this game? Well, so-and-so just get on or this or that. And then we're in this battle of negotiation. Yep. And I'm not saying you can't ever do that. Like, okay, I get that five more minutes, you know, we'll finish up this game. That, that is fine. But then if there's times when they're just like, okay, and they turn it off to make sure I acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much that that did not turn into an argument. Um, you know, I'm just, it just, I love that. Yep. Number one. And then maybe, I don't think it's too bad. And what do you think about this? A reward, you know, like, you know, you just earned yourself it doesn't have to be more screen time, but you know, you've been asking for, you know, they're always, can I go to Starbucks? Can I do this or that? Let's go to Starbucks after school tomorrow. You know, something yeah. like that. Well, and you're not, you're not going to like what I'm going to say. Shoot. Because I am 
rarely in favor, and a lot of parents don't like this, but I'm rarely in favor of rewards for behaviors that should be expected. Okay. But there is always a time, there is a time and a place, and there are certain kids who function well under, you know, under those kind of dynamics. So again, everybody knows yeah. their kids. Yeah, I mean, parent, parents always know how their kids best function. So I'm not saying that there's no time for it, but you also don't want it to become the, they start doing that for the reward and then yes. you're on the hook and then it becomes an argument over, well, how come I'm not getting it? Um, you know, but... Yeah, like catch him doing the thing kids, now and do, just, just I'm like, so proud of you even, for being, yeah. you know, I've started throwing the mature word around because mm -hmm. um, that's what I'll say is, you know, there's a mature way to handle things yeah. and then there's an immature way and I can really tell you're growing up, well, you know, with and, this response. For, and, and you think about it, as, even as adults, you, people like to be noticed, people like to be appreciated, mm -hmm. whether it's mm -hmm. an adult on, you know, on, on their job, I mean, a little bit of appreciation goes a long way like you want your kids to you know you want you want to acknowledge when your kids are doing something positive or right. something that 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 you like to see them do yes or um you know if you set a time limit I've done this before at five o'clock you need to turn it off and mm -hmm. you need to come down and set the table unload the dishwasher, do the laundry. Yeah, I'm great at it. <laughs> no, no yeah. but really yeah. and then yeah. if they respect that just really point it out yep give high fives or you know, just well, something that like, oh my gosh, I didn't even have to come ask sure. you. Look at you. Well, and letting them know that they're, it's, if they're going within whatever the guidelines that you've set, well, then it's more likely that the next time that they want to get on and what I'm, I always think of it in terms of gaming, but, but whether we want to get on whatever device it is, like you're more likely to let it happen if you know that they're going to be able to wind it down when they need to wind it down versus if every time that they're supposed to be getting off their device, they're not, and it right. becomes a battle, like that's a whole nother, that becomes a whole nother issue and right. headache for everybody. Right. Right. And then there's just that disconnection between, and that's the thing I think of too, I've thought of that several times, is that I am not going to have social media or phones or games and everything nope. disconnect me and, and be the fighting zone yep. between me and my kids. Yep. So I want to thank you because you have like totally eased me. I didn't, you know, I, I, I usually sleep, pre sleep pretty well. I, I even woke up last night and was thinking about it like, oh my gosh, what do I do? You know, these kids are, you know, this whole Gen Z, they're doomed. They're not. We just have to step up as parents too. So anyway, thank you so much for Anytime. this conversation. Anytime. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here as we kick off this podcast together. I really appreciate you joining me on this journey because I'm well aware you could be doing or listening to anything right now. Hey, if you enjoy the Authentically Raw content, please support the show by following, rating, and reviewing on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. You can also follow me on social media for daily inspiration. Head over to my website, jamiebarris.com, to sign up for weekly transformation tips. Or if you're interested in coaching, I currently have three openings for one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you're looking for an empowering community, we'd love for you to join us in the Transformation Tribe, our group coaching membership. More info available on my website under the Life Coaching and Membership tabs. One last thing, I'm rooting for you. Be real, be raw, be authentic.